Being an ageless woman means I'm not defined by my age. Oh yes, sometimes I get a little stiff and sometimes I, I got a little creak here and there. But ageless is the fact that I'm not going to be defined. I'm still building. I'm still creating. I'm still dreaming. I'm still hoping. I'm still pushing. I'm still encouraging. I am still impactful. I still have more to give at whatever age. And so to be an ageless woman, you have to accept that and you have to own it. Saludos. Welcome to another episode of The Wandering Broker. I am your host, Jose Quinones, and I am here with Lillian Harrison. Lillian, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. So, first question. Mm -hmm. Who are you? I am a strategic motivator. That's who I am. I am a legacy builder. Strategic motivator, legacy builder. Talk to me about that. Uh, motivation, I find that most of the time when we are not achieving uh, to the level that we feel like we should, we feel like we're missing something in life, we feel like something's just a little bit off, is because we are not motivated to do something. We're not motivated to even find the why. And the why is what motivates us to achieve great things. I have become and, and know that I am, for sure, a strategic motivator. Conversations around um questions that dig into your why, why you should be better, why you deserve to be better. So I am indeed a strategic motivator. And as far as legacy building, you know, I started this journey with the legacy for my sons in mind. And so with that, I know that it is not our intent to leave this world without leaving an impact. And so I am indeed, as a strategic motivator, assisting others in building legacy. Oh. You, you might as well shut it down right there. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was phenomenal. Um, what inspired you to become a real estate agent? Um, it was the missing piece. So I had been a um, housing counselor for years. I've worked with investors for years. So I've seen every side of home ownership uh, except being an agent. And yes, I know I was told many times I didn't have to be an agent to be able to buy property or, or, or have real estate, but it wasn't about me being able to just buy property for gain. It was about me being able to assist others, others through a process. And so being a real estate agent, you learn the process. So that's really kind of one of the reasons why um, I wanted to be a real estate agent because I wanted to learn the process and then my why around that was to be able to really provide others home ownership, better credit, better understanding of the processes, and a better life. You know what I love about this is that every time I get a different take that's still uniquely valuable because yeah. you just talked about the process. Yes. You know, like I, I, I've met with many individuals who I've said, you might want to think about not becoming right. an agent you know right. because you got to understand what's what's your why what's the right. per why are you doing right. why if as an investor why <laughs> do you want to get your license exactly and you just gave a perfect example why you yeah um needed to get your license yeah. and it makes sense absolutely Fair. absolutely um could you share some of the most memorable experiences you have had helping families um find their dream home I think probably the one of the most memorable, um, and it was uh, it was a struggle, and it was certainly a battle. Um, it was probably a battle from start to end. In the beginning, it was a battle emotionally because it was uh, a, a a three generations uh, in this one family. It was the grandmother, the mother, and the daughter. And um, the grandmother was actually my client. And while it was a very tumultuous process and um, a battle again from start to finish, the thing was is they were the daughter, the mother and the daughter were living in their car. And the grandmother's cry was, please help me put my family together. Give us a place to stay. So while, again, it was probably a battle uphill, downhill uh, from start to finish, I don't regret what I did because my why was in place. My why was here's a family that's sleeping in their car, don't know where they're going to be from day to day. The grandmother is crying out for her child and her child's crying out for her child. So in that one transaction, 
for me, I was able to be true to who I am as far as my why. And here I was now impacting the lives of three generations in one transaction. That would be one of the most memorable transactions for me as a real estate agent. And again, it de- it 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 made me dig into my why. Yeah. Yeah. And talk about fueling your purpose. Yes. Right? Like yeah. Yeah. real estate can be challenge a challenging field. Yes. What motivates you to keep going, especially when faced with so many obstacles? You've got you got to have a good team. Um, and this is no plug, and I'm so sorry. It might seem like a plug, but I have an amazing broker who took time to get to know me, right? Um, and so that allows me to continue to dig in. Um, but what motivates me to continue on is the fact that I know I am making a direct impact on families' lives. So while that last... Uh, example was one of one of my most powerful examples of my why and of of me even learning that I had enough fortitude to dig in. I think probably the best part about each and every one of my stories is the fact that it was a family that trusted me um, to give them what they were looking for in a dream home in their next chapter. And that's my why. I can say that as a real estate agent, every transaction becomes an impact that I personally and directly am making in someone's lives. And in our community. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Know? And in turn, Absolutely. other communities. Yes. And in turn, the entire world benefits. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I genuinely believe that, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Talk to us about your nonprofit organization's mission and primary goals. So like everything, our organization has evolved. We started off with a core demographic of ex-offenders and uh, chronically homeless and displaced veterans and their families. So really that includes everyone. I hate to say it like that because we we have this notion that it, it really excludes the affluent or people who are, you know, moderately well off, but it does not because I have learned in my journey that so many people know someone that's been affected by homelessness, that is a veteran that's been displaced, that is someone that's chronically homeless or someone that's been an ex-offender. Um, and so our mission was really to make an impact on what we would call societally the least of these, right? The people that you don't want to talk to, the people that are kind of forgotten, the people that are, to say, marginalized doesn't doesn't even begin to describe it. One of the things I've been able to do in our as in our evolution of elevated CDC is to merge my passions. I've continued in this housing journey, even with the impact. Uh, in my organization because we've been able to assist them with credit building. We've made collaboratives that changed their lives and allowed them to not only gain access to credit and to financial instruments, but to purchase housing. So it's the education piece. It's the continued evolution. So now we service really the community at large through several programs, not the least of which, again, is housing, financial literacy. We have the community center, which we transformed a an old abandoned armory into a community center center. And so we have a resource room. We do everything from basic needs to, uh, you know, basic needs being housing, I mean, being food and clothing to, again, resources, to connections, to getting your credit right, to buying cars, to buying houses. And this is a direct result of me and my team's work and belief in becoming elevated in our lives individually, therefore elevating others and connecting the community um, connecting all of us as community by resource building. You talked about Elevated CDC. Talk to me about it. What's that? So Elevated Community Development Corporation, we are a CDC, Community Development Corporation, in that we build communities. And our ecosystem is inclusive of community beyond tangibles, not just house, because the communities are made up of people. 
and we're all going through something. Sometimes it's uh, something that is invisible to see. It's depression, it's anxiety. And then sometimes it's the life cycle of poverty, whatever it is. And so the ecosystem for Elevated Community Development Corporation is to build communities, one person, one family at a time. And so we address each family, each person that comes through our doors is addressed individually. We're looking at what's needed. Um, and we don't tell you because these are our core services. You can't come for what we do so much as come for how can we help you. That's it. So that's what CDC we are building. This is our first year venturing as the nonprofit developer. So we will be building housing and we're excited about this new chapter for us. But we will continue with our core services and building communities one individual at a time. Wow. Can you tell us about that moment or that time or that phase you decided to merge your nonprofit, the love, your passion for serving others with real estate? Really with my reentry program. So becoming an agent was really great as I talked earlier about process. Becoming an agent really drilled down. I mean, you're not gonna go through the classes without understanding the process of home buying. It's not just home buying. You walk into a bank, you apply for a loan, they give you a loan. There is such a process. I mean, there's the searching, there's finding the right place. There's the parameters around you've got five people in your house and you can't buy a two bedroom home. So there are a lot of processes and then there are a lot of things to know as far as resources that are offered by the state and local government to help home buyers that we don't know of. Well, my forgotten people, my reentry individuals, um, seem to be that that demographic that feels like that's a dream that could never happen for them based on prior performances or, or things that have happened along the way in their life, their journey. So the being able to take my love of community and being elevated and what that means to us and take our reentry program. So um, last year we were able to help our first in our pilot program, one of my guys with less than a year out of prison, we were able to, to walk him through to a 750 credit score and we were able to literally not only find, find, renovate, and help him purchase a home in less than a year. So for me, and what Elevated means to me every day is raising the bar, is pushing, pushing the status quo. And so that was a moment where my love of community and my passion for what we do in my nonprofit and my real estate um, career ran smack into one another and says, this is what you can do. Understood. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about your organization's most impactful community initiatives? I would like to say we have several, and we do. My team would probably kill me because some things they don't even know yet are coming down the pike for them. Um, but um, our most impactful initiatives will be our workforce development for our reentry um, team, for our reentry participants. Um, because, you know, during COVID, everyone was affected. Didn't matter your financial status, low to moderate income, middle class, high, didn't matter. COVID didn't care. And so while lots of things were shutting down during COVID, literally shutting down businesses, um, anywhere you could look, things were shutting down. The future was so uncertain. God blessed us to really be able to um, employ to not only start a business, but to employ um, our reentry individuals, strictly our reentry individuals, 23 of them we carried straight through COVID. Um, and it may not seem like a lot to us, you know, because now we're doing $30 an hour and all this, but they were $15 an hour. Um, and so our most impactful work that we do really is around our reentry um, because we are able to give them a hope beyond the past right like society has always said once you hit prison this is you know life is pretty much over life is pretty much over things are not going to be the same for you it's going to be hard to do this and hard to do that and while that has systemically been true 
we have become, and I love to know this about it and I love to own it. We at Elevated CDC have become the game changer because it is hard. It's not, impo- it's not impossible. It is, it is definitely hard. So our impactful work is really around our reentry. And then we're affecting their families because the families are now seeing their fathers, their dads, you know, their brothers and their uncles and their cousins that have had this history, that have made this mistake, that have had this journey. Um, And then they get to see where society has put its stamp on you saying what you can't do and what won't ever happen for you. And now the game has changed because now you can. Um, You know, I heard you, um, this might be left field, but I heard you say, um, talk about, or mention mistakes um, when it comes to mistakes mm-hmm. can something that you did intentionally become be a mistake I believe so because I think we you know we live life with our knowledge and understanding at that point and at that level so I can look back over my life and say that there were things that I probably did at that moment intentionally that now as I've lived a little while as I've learned a few things and come into an understanding of some things that would I look back and say that probably was a mistake I would say that Um, it was something that had I known better or had I had more information or something I probably would have made a different choice whether it turned out good bad or indifferent I do believe you do the best you can at the level you're at and at that time, given the information you have and the knowledge you have. So I do believe that there can be things that you've done intentionally that um, indeed, if you look back under any other circumstances, you can say it was a mistake. Yeah. Um, what advice do you have for any professional looking to make a positive impact in their communities? Know your community like get to know you it it becomes wherever your feet trod becomes your ecosystem say that one more time say that one more time wherever your feet trod become your ecosystem that's the place where you have a footprint where you can make an impact so my advice to new real estate agents or people thinking to get in the game is first of all understand your ecosystem understand what's around you your environment get to know the trends we are quick to say the trends um, like because it's trending to say get to know the trends but what are the trends the trends is your environment what's going on because what's going on in your neighborhood might not be going on in my neighborhood and so I, if I plan on making an impact in this particular area, I need to get to know my area intimately, intimately, uh, and then build a team. Build a team because understand that we can't do it all. Uh, I am known as a one-woman show in a lot of areas, and I can tell you that in these 53 years, the one thing I have learned um, is I am not a one-woman show. I can't sustain at that level. I can build at that level. I can even maybe grow to some degree, but I can't sustain. And everything that we put our hands to is about sustaining, sustaining the impact that we have, sustaining the legacy. So my advice would be to get to know your ecosystem and to build a team. The team is what's gonna help you provide the best service to every client that trusts you with their dream. Fair. Why Linda Vista? Because you let me be me. You let me be me. I know, um, I feel as if, and people will say, oh, no, you're not weird. I do. So my weird is not weird for weird's sake. I know I'm a little bit to the left sometimes. I know that my why for, like, my love of people and community have caused me to do things that I know people did not understand Why is she holding on? Why is she still trying to help them? Why is she going the distance? And I get that. I needed a place that was going to, even in this endeavor, support me. I'm new to real estate. Support me, absolutely. Help me learn. Uh, Don't be afraid to slap my hand if I do something wrong because I'm accountable. I'm okay with being accountable. But let me be me. 
let me let me fight when I'm fighting, um, stand by me, correct me when I'm wrong, um, and then just support me through this now new chapter as a real estate agent. Uh, if people think that being a housing counselor or anything else you've done in, in real estate is the same as being an agent, it's not. There's so much to learn. So I needed someone knowledgeable. I needed a place that understood community because, again, my why is tied to my ecosystem and my community. And I learned, uh, I was actually referred to Linda Vista by another brokerage, a Keller Williams brokerage. And he said, you know, before you make the decision, just talk to this, talk to Jose. <laughs> I feel like in listening to your story, that would be a good fit. And if ever there was God speaking, that was it. Real estate involves constant learning. What resources or strategies have been most helpful in your professional growth? I think I had heard about the whole Tom Ferry, but I don't think I associated it with my success. Um, through the trainings offered at Linda Vista, I came to understand more about the system and, and not even just his system, although that was probably one majorly impactful one, because it taught you how to think differently about not just acquisition, about systematizing your daily, your work day, your schedule, how you're looking at lead generation. Every ecosystem has a language everyone and so it helped to learn the language so the resources that was a huge resource just in getting me to think a little differently um, and then the networking networking with people who are in the industry um, is an invaluable resource because I feel like I don't need to know about wells and and systems that you know my homeowners are facing but in order for me to be the best agent I need to be I do need to understand so that I'm not sending you a home that has a problem with the well or a system so the trainings that we get through our brokerage have been the valuable resource that has taught me more about being a comprehensive agent and I'm always going to say that that's the best thing that I bring to my clients is my knowledge that's what you're paying me for. You're not paying me to hold your hand, not really, because if either you like the house or you don't, but what you are paying for is my absolute, what you're trusting me to know is every detail about what's going to make this your perfect home. And so that has been probably the biggest resource and the networking. Your best selling book has garnished a lot of attention. Talk to us about your book. So I'm so proud. I think I've done a lot of things in my life, but I think seeing when we made, so the book is called, um, and it's an anthology, meaning that there are several authors and I am one of the authors, and it's called um, Disrupting the Status Quo, Ageless Women Crushing Their Next Level. And again, ties to everything we've talked about in that, yeah, I'm not ashamed at being 53. I'm not ashamed that I am still pushing and still moving. And what the book hopes to do is to inspire others, not just women, but inspire others to do to look at life in chapters. Sometimes we're closing a chapter and it's a painful thing. Sometimes it's a chapter in our life that we can take the most lessons from and understand that it's not losses, it's lessons, right? We don't, we, the L for us, and this is what I say in my camp all the time, the L for us is not a loss, it's a lesson. So because of that in our journey we have these chapters and we are crushing them and and yes as an ageless woman ageless being I still have dreams I'm still pushing I'm still moving am I looking to crush my next chapter whatever God puts before me I'm going to learn I'm going to do and this is where I'm going to leave so yes it has been an amazing book I was able to to you know enjoy the the journeys of the other authors in this book and realize, one, we're not a unicorn, right? Like we're not a unicorn. You're going through something. You just don't know I'm going through something. But we can draw inspiration from one another and allow us to be able to conquer life on our terms. Is there any question I should have asked? 
Um, I think you've covered a lot. I think, you know, when the very first question, the, you know, what's my why and what makes me me kind of, because my why is what makes me me, what makes me unique. Um, I don't think that there's a question that you you didn't ask that you didn't cover. I think just allowing me an opportunity to to be able to say to people about being your unique self, um, about even if you decide to be an agent, um, be your unique self, because what you bring to the table is just that. It's powerful. It's uniquely yours. It's the thing that's going to draw the right client, the perfect client to you. Don't be afraid to fight. Don't be afraid to stand. Don't be afraid to fail and make mistakes. Don't be afraid because that's just part of the journey. I think all the things that you endeavor to do when people may not understand who you are, right? Like I know that there were times we've talked and and you've encouraged me to be more in an area and all of it's me, right? I have to undeniably be who I am. I am appreciative of every moment that I get to do this work as an agent. Uh, I am appreciative of every moment that I simply get to be at a community event. And at this stage in the game, I finally become the me that was elusive, that was in there somewhere. And that's the me that serves as an agent, as an advocate, as a mom as a pastor. So I appreciate, I think your line of questionings were perfect. Why do you smile? Because I get another day to make an impact. I get another day to share my story. I get another day to laugh uh, and to love and to let it be literally an authentic thing. I get one more day. Where can people find your book? Amazon. You can actually purchase. You can actually reach out to me directly um, by DM, whether on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, or you can actually find us on Amazon. Again, we are Amazon bestseller in three categories. And um, if you look for disrupting the status quo, you will find us. You know, one of the things that keeps resonating with me since you said it is like this ageless woman. Yeah. Like that's powerful. Now, Please, let's dive into that a little bit yeah. more. Talk to me about what does that represent, ageless woman? Because we, you know, we've always heard the old adage, like, you're only as old as you feel. Um, and I know that we tend, as a society, to put um, people in boxes in stages of their life based on age, based on race, based on gender, any of those things. Being an ageless woman means I'm not defined by my age. Oh, yes, sometimes I get a little stiff and sometimes I, I got a little creak here and there. But ageless is the fact that I'm not going to be defined. I'm still building. I'm still creating. I'm still dreaming. I'm still hoping. I'm still pushing. I'm still encouraging. I am still impactful. I still have more to give at whatever age. And so to be an ageless woman you have to accept that and you have to own it. So I can accept something. You can give me a compliment and I can accept it but not own it. This is me owning it. This is ageless women saying I will not be defined by my age. I am going to own every moment of my journey. How can people get a hold of you? Um, again, I am really, you can Google me quite frankly. Um, so if you Google my name, you're going to find me everywhere. Um, but I am on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you can come to my center, which is the Milford Armory. Uh, so I'm pretty easy to find. It, it will start with a Google. That's what's up. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Until the next time, may you have a phenomenal day.